Hello everybody, MD Polo here at Range USA in Carmel, Indiana with a, gun, a revolver I've been trying to get my hands on for quite some time now. It's the Smith & Wesson Model 19 Carry Comp. Just absolutely beautiful. Like I said, I've been wanting to get it for a long time. First shots. Now let's try double action. Oh, I think I'm all over the place here. Very soft shooter. And that was it. Nice flinch. But not a revolver guy. Got to get used to this. I think I was shooting pretty high. And I may have to adjust the sights on it, but let's see. I always tell you, I show you everything, good or bad. Yeah, definitely shooting high. One, two, three, four, five. And I don't know where the sixth one went. But okay, I'll work on it. But there it is Smith and Wesson Model 19 carry. Let's, uh, I'm going to work a little bit on that sighting and also take you to the tabletop. Alright, now let's try some double action. Let's go back to single. That was that. What a soft shooting revolver. Let me turn you around. <laughs> wow, they're all up here. I gotta figure this one out. Today we're gonna be taking a look at a revolver, and as you may know by now, that's completely outside of, no pun intended, my wheelhouse. But I'm learning, so bear with me on that. As you can see by the box, it's from Smith & Wesson, and it is a performance center piece and it is the Model 19 Carry Comp. Now this is a revolver that I've been looking for for quite some time now actually. And we're gonna take a look. It, I'm not gonna go through the full unboxing and just wanna show you, this is the, the revolver itself. And I saw one at my home away from home, Shoot Point Blank, I'm sorry, Range USA, used to be Shoot Point Blank. Range USA in Carmel, Indiana some months ago and it sat there and I was looking at it and just one of those brain fade moments just didn't pick it up and finally when I decided I was going to go get it of course it was gone and since then I've been looking for one and there's just none to be found um, as you know or should know I don't like to buy things online I like to not only support my local people but also give it um, give it some a look over feel it see how it feels in the hand and um, so I was hoping to get one locally and a friend of mine over at ZR Tactical Solutions as you know he does a lot of work for me and uh, he's just a good friend he owns he owned this this was his I bought it from him and I never thought he would part with it until one day I mean he knew I was looking for one he called me up and he said you know what I don't shoot it if you want it I'll sell it to you so he did and one of the things he did, he installed the grips. I may bounce around a little bit, but bear with me on that. It came originally with this rosewood grips. They're very pretty. I like them quite a bit. And the way they would fit here, let me see if I can do it around the camera, is it would fit like that. And as you can tell, not only they're, I, li I like them a lot, they're very, very pretty. But you can see they're a lot shorter. So when I give it a, a grip and with a medium sized hand, there is no room for my pinky. 38 special is fine. 38 special plus P gets a little bit, you know, more interesting. But if you're going to fire 357 Magnum, this is just not acceptable to me. So I love the way they look, but it was just not going to happen. So I left the ones he installed 
because not only these are G10, they have a lot more traction to them, they're more grippy, but I have a full grip and it is actually very, very comfortable. The other thing they do is Smith & Wesson includes a rubber set of grips and this would look kind of like this. It's about the same size as the G10 grips. Very comfortable. So if you're into the all blacked out look, this might be a thing for you. Also, what it does with the rubber grips, it does not leave metal exposed like it does here with a G10 or with a rosewood grip. It completely covers the rear of the revolver. So as the revolver recoils, it would cover the metal and it's a bit softer on the hand. The only thing I didn't like, and I don't know if it's just subject is specific to this particular set of grips, but when they close, even when you screw them correctly, you see the gap here? This gap never closed. So I, you know, I like details. You take care of the little details, the big ones take care of themselves. And I would prefer if this would completely close and not have an open gap like that in the back of the revolver, in the back of the grip. And that's what was going on. Um, I probably would have left the rubber grips on if it wasn't for that. And I haven't reached out to Smith & Wesson. I'm not sure if I want to buy another set of grips and risk it coming ex being exactly the same way. So for whatever that, for whatever's worth, that's that. So let me put all this aside. That's all it comes with it. It comes with a traditional paper with the two sets of grips. You can, it comes with your instruction manual and that's about it. So let me get this out of the way. And now let's get into the revolver. And again, I'm sorry that I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but it is based on a K frame revolver and it is carbon steel frame. And the model number, it is the Carry Comp, the Model 19 Carry Comp, and it is from the Performance Center. And what that means, what that means is that the Smith & Wesson paid a lot more attention. The, the cylinder, the action has been all tuned by the Performance Center, and it gives you a very smooth and predictable action on the revolver. It is made to shoot 357 Magnum, which means that it can also shoot 38 Special, and 38 Special Plus P. As far as the weight, it comes in at 34.2 ounces. And to give you an idea, that is right in between what would be the weight of an average 1911 with a uh, commander size, which comes in at around 33 ounces average, and a full size 1911 that comes in average at 39 ounces. So at 34.2 ounces, this revolver, it's right in between those two. So it's a very carryable, um, easy to carry piece. It's made for concealed carry. And what makes it special, as you can see up here, is what they call the power port. And this is, if you want to call it a built-in compensator. But for those of you that don't know, is the minute you fire the round, the bullet is exiting the barrel, the gases that propel that forward, the bullet forward, will escape through the power port and thus helping you keep the escape up and helping you keep the barrel lined up. So it's a very, very easy revolver to shoot. It's a pleasant revolver to shoot, especially if you're using 38, uh, 38 Special. A friend of mine hand loads some 38 Special and more for type of competition shooting and it just planks away absolutely very 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 nice the msrp on this is coming in at around a thousand ninety six dollars and from what i've been able to see locally when i did see it locally before i spaced out and didn't buy it you're going to expect to pay the full thousand ninety six if not a little bit more the Model 19 was originally introduced in 1950, and it was discontinued in 1999. Smith & Wesson was paying a lot of attention to their polymer frame, uh, polymer pistols, striker-fired pistols, and discontinued the Model 19. But they brought it back in 19, I'm sorry, in 2018. One of the things that you will see is the Model 19, and I'm not sure if it'll show up here 
on camera, but probably not. But down here, that's when Smith and where Miss Smith and Wesson puts the model number. See if that will help a little bit. Come on. No, but down here, it's going to say 19-9. The dash 9 means that this model, the Model 19, has gone through nine major engineering changes, and they were significant enough that makes every model a bit better. While we're here, and again, I'm bouncing around quite a bit, one of the upgrades they did was, you see this that ball detent right there? It's to make a better locking system for the cylinder, for the crane. And talking about the crane, you can see that we have a full-size guide rod, ejecting guide rod, and a full-size shroud. Another improvement that they did for the Model 19-9 is you're going to see right here where the forcing cone is, they beefed up this entire area here. It's a lot thicker than it used to be. And that's because if you're going to give it a constant diet of 357 Magnum, they were cracking, the frames were cracking down here. This is where the frames were cracking. So they beefed up all this area here around the forcing cone. And what I read, and again, if I didn't mention it earlier, you want to see us read a lot of the history behind the Model 19 is a fantastic article on guns.com. There you can hear a lot, you can read a lot of the history behind the Model 19, and they'll talk about this in a lot more detail. The cylinder is carbon steel. Again, it's a six-shot six revolver. And originally, look at the top, the barrel is stainless steel, and that is the power port that I was talking to you about. The sights originally came with a Trigicon night sight at the front, and not in the rear, but in the front, it was a Trigicon night sight. And my friend changed it to this fiber optic red and retained the rear. And the rear is a fully adjustable square notch sight from Smith & Wesson. Now here's where I'm going to talk a little bit about Smith & Wesson and their customer service. Because the original sight, as you can see here, it just got this lip right here. You can remove that screw and this whole assembly comes out if you need to replace the sight. And I took it to the range and it was shooting, gosh, probably half a foot low. And as no matter how much I tried to adjust it, it would not, I couldn't get it even on paper. And what it ended up happening is the lip that goes in there this area right here, I don't know if the camera will catch it. Let me see here. I don't know if you can tell how dent it is. It's like undulated. It's not straight. So it would never sit. It was sitting like this. So I called, I called Smith & Wesson. I explained to them what was going on. No questions asked. They just ask for my name and address, they send me a new site. Perfect. The other thing you can do with this revolver, which I think it's really, really cool, let me figure out how to do this for you, is I have this plate that my friend included, and I don't know who makes the plate. I'm going to try to find out for you. If I can, I'll pin it in the comments. But again, you remove this, the, the factory site, by taking this screw off, and then this plate slides right into the slot where the original sight was. And it also has rear sight. Okay, so you retain the rear sight if in case you did not want to install a red dot. But it, if you don't want a red dot, it co-witnesses perfect with a revolver, with a front sight. So you have a co-witness with a red dot and the ability to mount a red dot. 
So I have a Trigicon RMR that I'm going to put on this and it's going to be really cool. So I'll have full co uh, lower one third, I believe, co-witness with an RMR on the revolver. So really, really cool. I should walk you around a little bit. So this is a revolver that was, of course, made for for carry, for concealed carry, and um, both the finish. You can see the the finish is bead blasted, so it's not the polished finish that you would see in the older revolvers. The trigger shoe is nice and wide. It does not have serrations on the trigger shoe like you would see some of the older Smith & Wessons, but the hammer spur, it is serrated, and you've got nice texture up here as well. Top of the barrel and the full length, you can see that it's got serrations to reduce glare. Now let's talk a little bit about the trigger itself. The trigger itself, um, as I mentioned earlier, it was all tuned, both the trigger and the cylinder, by the Performance Center over at Smith & Wesson. The trigger also has an over-travel stop that you'll see right there. So a nice feature to have. The single action and the double action are very smooth, very predictable, and easy to stage you like staging your trigger in a revolver. In this particular model, the double action is pulling at 10 to 10 and a half pounds, and the single action is pulling between four and four and a half pounds. Some of the reviews that I saw online, they were pulling a little heavier than that, so I think I just got a, I must have gotten just lucky with this one, or my friend just shot it quite a bit. Now you don't see a lot of wear, you see a little bit of the mark here on the cylinder from where it's been fired, but it's not too, too bad. And um, here you got your ejector and cylinder to open your cylinder right here. Press it forward, pop it out, and there it is. He also included a holster and it's a Blade Tech holster. So if I want to carry it outside the waistband, that's the way that would fit. I would want to get a nice leather holster. So I'm going to start looking into that. So we already checked that it was safe and I don't recommend doing this with just an empty chamber, but I don't think it'll hurt it too much just for the video. But if you want a double action, there you go. Very nice and smooth. Single action. It's like glass, it's instant. So there it is, my friends, a not so quick look at a newbie at revolvers. So please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, what I miss, what I should learn. I would much appreciate that. I'm here to learn from you as well. So please leave me comments below and let me know what you think about the Smith & Wesson Model 19-9 from the Performance Center. Please remember that I upload videos every Wednesday morning. Yeah, sorry, every Friday morning and when I can on Wednesdays as well. I'm pretty active on Instagram, and there you can see most of what's coming into the channel before it hits YouTube. Also, remember that I do make all these videos in one take only, so there's no editing, splicing, or inserting of other material. So once it's done, I do it in one take. So I appreciate your patience with me on that. We're on our way to 15,000 subscribers. I'm very humbled for your support. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you do. It doesn't cost you anything. That's a good way to find out what's coming to the channel and also lets YouTube know that you want to see more content like this and it helps us in the algorithm when we're operating in a hostile environment as is YouTube. Once again, 
Thank you very much for stopping by, and until the next time, God bless.